Cordy here, and um, today I'm going to be reviewing the Kafan Light and the 91%, and the Russian 91%, should I say, running them both side by side and uh, telling you what I think. Um, for this, I need to thank Stan for lending me the Kafan Light so I could compare it to the Russian. Thank you very much. I have had it for a few weeks and um, with good reason because. I really wanted to put both of them through the paces so I could really say conclusively where they're strong, where they might be weak and everything else. Um, so with that being said, there's some people that will watch this that might feel outrage that I've even got the two of them in the same video. Um, I think it might be a bit premature to go judging things that quickly. So um, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. If you do, then um, then let's crack on. On this side here, these are all of the bits of the uh, Russian 91%. On this side here are all the bits of the Kafan light. And as you can see from that table group shot, you're dealing with pretty much exactly the same parts. There are a few differences, which I will cover. Um, but just to give you a quick example, I'm going to take a tank part of the Russian, and I'm going to put on the clear window of the Kafan. There we go, that fits together without a problem. Um, let's take another example. Um, let's take the chimney part off the Russian and the chimney part off the Kafan. Again, not a problem. Um, so it's fair to say that in pretty much every detail, here we go, just another example, you'll see from the metal finishes here, this is the Kafan in its um, normal brushed stainless finish. This is the matte finish of the Russian. And there we go. There's the two parts together without any issue at all. So in many, many ways, um, the Russian is an exact copy of the Kafan. Um, so where does it differ? Um, just a couple of small things. This is from the Russian and as you can see this is a threaded drip tip. I will sort out the focuses when I get in for closer looks. Um, you have got a 510 adapter so you can run any old drip tip in that. But with the Kafan you only get the option of using a 510 drip tip. But given that the style of this is exactly the same, there's not really any functional advantage in that. It's um, just a slight, and I do mean slight, aesthetic benefit. Um, okay, the base plates, this is the thing that most people are going to be aware of. So this is the Kafan, and you've got a single air intake. And I hope that you can see on that shot, I will get in closer. Um, but you've got just one air hole, uh, which has got a chamfered edge around the outside. Now one thing that does do is make it a very quiet device to you know, when you're inhaling on it. Um, this is the Russian, and although it's it belongs to the Russian, it's still kind of proprietary to Svomesto, um, as it's exactly the same mechanism as off the 3.1. So there's your screw for adjusting your airflow, and there's your air intake. Um, the other difference, which is very slight, is that the insulator for the Russian is built onto the deck, although I'm sure I could take that off. Whereas on the Kafan light, the insulator is actually built onto this positive terminal here. Um, other differences, Kafan light center pin, um, and you've just got one thread on the end there. That's that. The Russian has got a split design. Sorry, bear with me. Um, so here you go. You've got a pin that looks the same as the Russian. Sorry, I will get in for closer looks. Um, and into there, you've got an adjustable pin. Um, so the 510 connector on the Russian is slightly smaller as well. And this means that you can always get it flush mounted on devices that may not potentially allow you to flush mount, including the smoke magneto, which has got to have one of the shortest 510 
sort of um, adapters or has the shortest 510 length of any of the mods that I've come across. Um, one thing to mention is that when this one came from the factory, it was actually torqued down too hard. So the adjustable screw was well and truly embedded in the main unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if that happens to you, the advice that I got uh, was to put the screwdriver that comes in the kit through the hole in the center and then use another screwdriver to apply as much torque as necessary to get it free, um, which I did. Now, as soon as that part is free, it will not seize again, um, as far as I can tell. Um, so in terms of the body, that is the main things that I can show you that are that are different about the two devices. One more thing to show you about these two um, is just the quality of the branding and the finishing. Um, so this is the bottom of the k light, and as you can see, all of this is laser etched. Um, really nice quality, as you would expect from Svomesto. This is the Russian, and again, these are things that matter to some people, not everyone. Um, and on here, I couldn't possibly tell you how that's put on there, but it's not a laser etching, and I have no idea how long it's likely to last. Um, I mean, I've washed this in the sink. I've done so many coil builds on these two already. Um, and, yeah, it's still in place. I have no idea what it is. Um, but, yeah, that was just another thing that I felt was worth pointing out. We're now going to build a couple of coils, and I'm going to go with micro coils. Um, I should point out that the whole idea of this video is I'm going to put exactly the same build into both devices, and that way, you know, we can do a proper side by side comparison. Now, the easiest type of coil to get consistent is the micro coil, and um, I'm going to be following someone else's method. I can't remember the name of the chap that did it, but he did an excellent video on showing how to build a micro coil for a KFIN. So what we've got here are a couple of pieces of 0.32mm um, canthal wire, and um, I cannot stress this enough. It's really important. It makes life so much easier when you're micro coiling to uh, properly flame your canthal before you start getting working. Now I'm only going to build one of these on cam um, because there's pointless me building both but I will show you the deck on both of them before I get going so I'm just going to finish off this job here okay so this is a 1.5 mil drill bit and um, as is always the way for micro coils I'm going to position the wire on there and I'm going to wrap about 10 coils so that they're all touching. But not overlapping. Okay, and when you're building a core for a KFIN, you want both of the tails stuck out a bit, like so. So you can see that the cores are all tight, they're not completely touching, but we'll sort that out once it's on the deck. This is the part of the video where I wish I had a solid base to be working on, um, but we'll just have to make do, but I'll apologise in advance for any dodgy camera work. What we're going to do is lay the micro coil over the top of the airflow, and as you can hopefully see, when you do that, the legs automatically choose a side for where they're going to attach under the screws. I'm trying as I do this to not end up with most of what I'm doing being obscured by my fingers. But <laughs> easier said than done. I've also got the drill bit trying to make it a run for it, so I'm just going to let it fall out for now. Basically, as soon as you've got one of these legs attached, it then becomes much easier to get the other one into place. OK. 
okay one down just going to reinsert the drill bit just to keep everything together the other thing that's quite important is to make sure that rather than coming straight across you're actually maintaining sort of a 45 degree angle um, which we've kind of got going on here okay now we're just going to wiggle off the tails and you should be left with something like that now like I said at the moment that coil is touching the base which means we're going to end up with a short so what you want to do is just lift the drill bit slightly until you've got about a mil of clearance between the coils and the bottom of the deck if I take that out you should now be able to see we're just off we are just off um, right so that's the first stage done as you know with a micro coil the most important thing is to make sure that all the coils are touching um, so this is the point where we want to rectify any any gaps that we might have so I've just screwed this onto a mod so once you've um, given it a fire use some needle nose pliers of some description and give it a pinch get everything um, squeezed nicely together it's looking pretty good to me perhaps do it one more time one final adjustment happy boy so there you go in almost every way that matters we now have two identical coils I am going to put it onto um, uh, Vamo just to read the image and make sure that they are exactly the same um, but yeah I'm just going to show you how to thread a cotton wick now so what I've got here is a piece of plain old cotton wool um, it has been boiled just to make sure that it's got no leeches or anything left over from the manufacture process. I'm just going to tear a piece off like so. I'm then going to roll it to a point at one end and then thread that through the coil. Now what you often find is that the piece that's been pulled through um, is naturally a bit thinner than the piece that's still left over. Not to worry about that at all. Um, you can always, if you like, just roll it at this side to make it a little bit easier to work with for this next stage. Sorry, you'll have to forgive the, um, the cuts in the camera. It's not because I'm doing things wrong. It's just because my audio and video keep getting out of sync. So yeah, basically once you got to this stage, you want to trim off so that you've got about a centimetre of cotton wool protruding from either side of the coil. Like so. Now, some people will tuck in the cotton at this stage, but um, I can do it that way. I just find it easier to pull the ends of it up like so get the chimney over the top and then position where the cotton's going to end up afterwards that way it's the easiest way to make sure that none of the cotton is going to end up in the um, in the little wells that carry the juice into the chamber so once you've done this basically um, same as with any other wick you just want to gently coax the ends of the 
um, cotton down to the base and all you, you're not trying to pack anything down or anything like that literally all you're doing is just making sure that the cotton is clear of the uh, channels that introduce the uh, juice to the chamber you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that um, I have already done the same here so I guess we should get some e-liquid in and just make sure that everything's still working so I'm just going to put a couple of drops over the coil itself um, I can't remember which one I just did so I'm going to do it to both No problems with that one. There we go. Again, that one's going without any issues. So, at this point, what a lot of people will do is just carry on and rebuild the whole thing. What I like to do, and maybe it's overkill, is just get the top of the chimney on. And just have a quick vape of it in this form and that way if you've got a problem with metallic tastes or anything like that then you're going to know about it before you've got it you know filled with juice when it's twice as big a faff no problems there so as you can see I've already built up the kafen I'm just going to build up the uh, Russian for posterity's sake as I'm sure you can appreciate they're both exactly the same. Okay. So that's the three parts that make up the tank. Um, there is a metal piece for the center as well as the polycarbonate window if you want to use juices that are tank crackers. The other thing that you want to make sure is that the seal um, on there isn't perished otherwise if you've not got a proper seal against the top of the chimney um, then you are going to get it flooding and leaking all over the place. There we go, built. Both of these are filled in exactly the same way, but I wanted to do it on cam because I didn't want to be accused of any bias. So the screw comes out of the base. I'm going to take a bottle of fluid and I'm going to use the same bottle for both. Um, and then basically when you're filling this, the one thing that you want to be careful of is um, that you don't allow too much pressure to build up. So I'm just filling this in little touches and then basically as soon as you see that clear window full um, it's not completely full but that's probably the safest place to stop so that's the Russian I'm just doing exactly the same with the kafen. Let's just get a ohm reading using the VAMO. Okay, so kafen light 1.3 ohms. Russian. 
1.3 ohms exactly the same builds okay so um, let's crack on with the comparison I've got on the top here uh, the case I'd like to start with both of them on a draw tube I'm not sure how much juice I've got left in the battery but I don't think it really matters for this comparison Um, and as you can see it's producing an absolute ton of vapor the flavor is typical kefen really pronounced really strong um, lovely you get every note you really do it really brings out all of the best in your e-liquid right same battery same everything but now we're going with the Russian 91% Um, and I don't know whether the camera is actually going to show it, but this is ever so slightly weaker in the vapour production and in the flavour. Um, not for any other reason except, well, I think, in fact I more than think I've tested it, and it's down to this um, adjustable centre pin. So, okay, let's wrap this up with some conclusions. The KFEN obviously you've only got kind of the one standard input and you can't adjust it um, I don't know whether this camera picked it up because I've got a noise cancelling mic but this is far quieter to vape with than this and I think it's because of the shape of the air intake on this device and I also think it's because this has got a chamfered outside edge and it definitely does something to make it quieter when you're using it and for me that makes it feel a little bit more luxurious the other thing about the adjustable airflow was before I got them to play with I assumed that if you were having a problem with it not wicking fast enough then the rushing would be better because you can just tighten up the airflow so when you draw on it it creates more of a vacuum in the chamber and as a result it sorts out any wicking issues but I've run coils in this, I've run so many coils but I've run some down to 0.6 ohms in both and neither of them um, with the standard airflow had any problems at all keeping up even vaping at that temperature I was quite blown away really so the adjustable airflow on the Russian 91% has nothing to do with performance and everything to do with comfort um, with that in mind, for me at least, the way that the KFN airflow is set up is perfect. Um, some people might say it's a little bit airy. For me, it's exactly how I like it. And to be honest, since having the Russian, most of the time I've left the airflow adjusted, so it's pretty similar to what I'm getting off the KFN anyway. So that's the adjustable airflow taken care of. The, like I said, and as I, I hope you can see a little bit of a difference on video, um, when measuring the resistance, you're getting the same resistance on both. So it's not losing that much. But under load, this is definitely dropping some compared to the KFEN. Um Now, I think that it's because of an extra contact point where you've got threads touching against creds, threads touching against threads for current to pass through. And... Um, it's one extra point of weakness that the KFEN doesn't have. Um, now, one thing I have tried, and it actually worked, was putting some no locks just on the threading of the screws. And that small change actually made it perform exactly the same as the KFEN. Um, I just want to make it clear, I'm talking about negligible amounts here, but they're noticeable. They are if you've tried both and you use both. So that's solution number one. Just take the adjustable pin out, put some no locks on the threading and put it back together. The other thing that I've done, and I was hoping it would be here in time for the video, but no such luck, is that screw is an M2. Um, now I went onto eBay and I found someone selling brass M2 screws 
25 for £2.50. So I've bought some of those. Um, obviously brass is a better conductor than steel. Um, and I will run no locks on that as well. And that's going to take out any of the um, detrimental effects of having that extra contact point for the voltage to go through. Um, so which one's best? And whatever I say here is going to be wrong. But as always, it depends. If you're running on a variable voltage mod, then chances are you won't be able to adjust the pin on the mod. So having an adjustable pin so that you can flush mount everything is really good. And the voltage drop thing doesn't matter so much on a variable voltage because you just put it up by 0.5 watts or 0.1 volts. And that's it. you back to kind of level pegging and the performance stakes. Um, if you've got a mod, chances are then you can adjust the centre pin on that, which makes the adjustable pin surplus to requirements. Um, so if you're going to be using this on mechanicals, and given that the adjustable pin is actually a negative in that context, I would recommend the KFIN. Um, where the airflow is concerned, if if you've used Davids, Pro Tanks, um, that kind of thing, the type of airflow that you've got on there is about where the K fan light is. It's no more loose and it's certainly no tighter than that. So if you've used those devices and you're quite comfortable with that airflow, you will be very, very happy with the K fan. The other thing as well is that the waiting times at the moment, I believe they're still running less uh, EZIG for the Russian 91%. So you, I mean, I had to wait a few weeks to get mine. And um, I think you still got a bit of a wait before they can get them in to ship them out. Whereas Cloud9 seem to be restocking the KFIN very quickly. So the KFIN's more readily available. Um, and I didn't want to do the political thing, but let's be honest, in every aspect, the threading, um, even the airflow control, it's all Fomesto's property. And given that there's such a negligible amount of price difference after it's shipped and everything, um, I'd much rather, given the options, support the original device manufacturer. That's a personal opinion, and I'm not saying it to inspire any form of debate. You may agree, you may not. Um, and I think that's... I think that's it. I can't say any more than I've already said. Um, my preference is for the cave and light. That's not to say that the Russian is way inferior or anything like that. I mean it's got some really good innovation over the KFIN. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers, bye bye.